What is up? This is the War Dog. Welcome to Comic Book Theater with my my host Jr. What's going on, Jr.? What's up, War Dog? And we got a special guest. We got Dane. What's going on, Dane? Not much, guys. Oh, it's it's good to see you, Dane. Especially with the Minnesota Vikings doing as awesome as they are doing <laughs> compared to the Buffalo Bills and the Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> Sorry, Dane. I don't get many opportunities to, to, to take some shots at you on the Minnesota Vikings. I, I'm sorry about the whole Kirk Cousins thing. I actually right. thought he was going to be a good quarterback, but it's not looking too good at this point. Nope. All right. So th this isn't a football show. This is a comic book show. And, and our first topic is the new Joker movie with Joaquin Phoenix. Yes, it looks like a really excellent movie, and Joaquin Phoenix is an excellent actor. I've seen him in several movies, and I always enjoy his movies. Um, I think the last one I've seen him in was Her, and it almost seemed like a stupid movie, but I watched it, and it was pretty entertaining. Um, this movie is kind of on a, out of continuity. It, it, it's uh, kind of a standalone movie. I don't even know if this is really the actual Joker. I know um, there was one YouTuber that John had an argument with, and I, if John wants to talk about that, that's fine. But this one YouTuber did point out the fact that the Joker is probably like 40 years old, Joaquin Phoenix is the age, and that Bruce Wayne is a kid. And that was one of the things that he pointed out. He pointed out some other things. He's, he's, he's a really good YouTuber, and it's fun to hear that John got to argue with him. Hopefully one of these days we get to see him on this show. Um, the, the one thing for me is, although I do love Joaquin Phoenix, um, I, I, I don't know if it's like, like I don't feel like the urge to go to the theater and go see this. This feels more like a movie that I, I, I wait to see it on Netflix or see it on video. That doesn't mean that it's not good. I've, I've heard good reviews on it. I know that Joaquin Phoenix actually researched this laughing illness so that he could actually do the laugh the correct way. And I, I mean, you know, I know, I mean that, you know, I give him a lot of credit for that. He's, he's definitely a talented actor and he really does care about, about his stuff. And it, it, it's, it is a bit unfortunate that he's being used um, in, in this movie and it's not a part of continuity because he is such an amazing actor. I would like, you know, we all, we all dream about of these actors that we would like to see in, in other movies. And sometimes it does suck to see them being used in a movie like this. And then knowing that we'll never see him again. Um, you know, my, like I said, my feeling is because this is in part of continuity, I don't feel like going to the movie theater to go see this. I'll probably watch it on video. I mean, Continuity is important, and I know, like, we talked about Star Wars last week, and one of the biggest problems with The Last Jedi was that, like, Ryan Johnson seemed to not pay attention to everything that happened in the movies before, did things that probably shouldn't have happened, like Holdo light speeding through a whole bunch of Star Destroyers. It was a bit ridiculous since it's never happened before. Um... John, I'll go to you first. I mean, how do you feel about all this stuff that I've just babbled on about? Oh, no, man, you're cool. So th this is the deal. I, I am a fan of continuity. I like long stories, but I love Elseworld and What If comic books from Marvel and DC. And the truth is, I look at, and I've said this before on the podcast, I look at all TV shows and movies as what ifs or else worlds. Because the medium doesn't transfer directly from comic books to movies, there's no way that they're going to be able to be as precise. They're going to have to cut certain things out of our favorite stories in order for them to work in that medium, okay? So now, having said that, I, I will say, yes, I did get into a bit of a, a bit of an, I don't I want to call it an argument. It kind of is, but. A squabble. We'll talk, uh, yes, yes, a, a bit of a squabble uh, with a fellow YouTuber. 
about this on his review video and really his review was not bad of the movie i agree with 99 percent of what he said it i really do take uh i take a bit of offense when people want to throw away um what ifs and else worlds because we're talking about fiction here okay that's what we're talking about. We're, we, we talked with Reggie about this. We're talking about funny books, man. We're talking about comic books. It's fiction. You may, yes, this Joker movie is supposed to be a one-off. It's supposed to be an origin. They can, I cut, never, you, sure, can, I cut, can I cut in for a second? I, sure, you man. just, you reminded me of that, um, the L, Ellen Iverson interview where he's like, we're talking about practice. Well, <laughs> but... Uh, that's all. No, no. You're that's cool, all I wanted to say. No, you're cool. I, I, I look. If, if that line of mine gets played as much as Alan Iverson's did, we're doing something right. Um, <laughs> and anyway, uh, my my point is is I have not gone to see it uh, or not gone to see the movie in theaters. I'm with you, War Dog, and I said this whenever it first was talked about. This is most DC movies. I end up renting them. I don't end up going to the movie theater for uh, just because they're cost prohibitive. Uh, I'm not that interested in them. And DC does not have a good track record, to be frank with you. But their movies being extra entertaining. So to drop $100 or more just for tickets for me and my family to go, no way, dude. I'll, I'll wait till it comes on Netflix or I'll wait till I, I can rent it or buy it at home, you know, 25 bucks and I can have the Blu-ray and everything's good. Um, Dane, I'm going to throw it to you, man. G give us your opinions on, on the Joker movie, on, on whether you care whether or not it's in continuity or not. Um, I'm kind of with you guys on the, on the whole aspect of I'll wait till it comes out on Blu-ray. Um, because again, DC's track record with like, live action films is not the greatest. Could Joker be one of those movies that uh, I'll regret not having seen in the theater? It's a possibility. Um, you know, and, and I've done my review or research on the reviews and stuff. And like one of the reviews I found the funniest is um, where is it? I'm looking, uh, they called. Joaquin Phoenix is brilliant and the film is undeniably fascinating, but the violence is unsettling and leans dangerously close to being irresponsible. I'm just, what, what are you supposed to expect from a guy that is, his whole character is anarchy? That's a review from somebody who does not understand comic books or the Joker at all. Right. If you don't know the, the, the subject matter, then you really shouldn't be given a review based off of that. Yeah. And, and it's a movie. I mean, there's been plenty of movies that have had extreme violence. I mean, why all of a sudden now <laughs> is, is this an issue? I mean, I, I think I know the answer, but Wait, look at Scarface, look at hostile. <laughs> sure. Oh yeah. And you know, as, as far as the continuity aspect, um, you know, if it's a good movie and it stands alone, they, they could have plans to roll out because DC has pretty much gave up on their, uh, their, their, their universe like Marvel had. So if Joker's successful, maybe they can roll off from that. Look, I, I think that their effort to make a continuous universe was flawed. It, feel, it always felt to me like they were trying to play catch up to Marvel and they were trying to do it in three films. What Marvel did in 20 some films and you, you can't do that. It, you're, you're asking for a disaster if you're trying to do that. It doesn't, it doesn't work, man. I mean, case in point is, what's go, is what happened with the DC universe. Um, it just... It was doomed to failure, and I think most all comic book nerds could see that handwriting on the wall if somebody had said to them, hey, guys, we're going to do in how many films? 
I, I want to say a maximum of five, but it, it wasn't that many. A maximum of five, we want to catch up with the Marvel Universe and have everybody care about it, and blah, blah, blah. That's not never going to never going to happen. You know, I mean, you you guys you you kind of got me thinking here. Like, it it, it is a bit of a shame because we know that Robert Pat Pattinson is going to be playing Batman at some point. And it, it, it um it, it, one of the YouTubers that I watched, Young Ripa, he, he mentioned that um, the Joker and Bruce Wayne are significantly different ages in this movie and that was one of the issues that he had with it and and of course this is a standalone but if Joaquin Phoenix was as good at the Joker as I've been hearing it, it is unfortunate that we're, we're you know we're not rolling from this Joker movie into a Batman movie with Robert Pattinson you know uh, um, it, it's like you're losing a really great Joker just because you wanted to do this film Yeah, no, it could definitely be a missed opportunity. Um, look, I, I think that Batman is one of those properties with his rogues gallery and as dark and brooding as he is in, in certain comic books. You know, they could go with an R rating for violence and stuff like that. That would not be the end of the world for most comic book fans. Because we understand that Batman, Batman is not Superman, so he's not the big blue boy scout. He's not Spider-Man, where, you know, with gr great power comes great responsibility. He's the guy that he, basically his main rule is, I'm not going to kill anybody. And by the way, guys, if you're not aware, that's a relatively new rule for Batman. If you look back in, in, in the uh, 30s and 40s, 50s and 60s, Batman didn't care if he threw uh, uh, one of Joker's minions out a window. <laughs> oh, well, you know what I mean? Right. Uh, or, or, or the I'm not going to use a gun. A man, yeah. when he debuted, he used a gun. What's that now? When he debuted back in the 40s, he used a gun. I'm saying, that's that's part of what I'm saying. All of these all of these hard and fast rules for Batman, they were never meant to be hard and fast rules at that point. They're rules that are relatively new from like the 80s-ish on, even mid-80s on. Um, you know, uh, using non-lethal force, some of those things. Now, whether that's from, whether that's from political pressure, and, and I don't mean that in the sense of government politics i just mean that in the sense of people politicking around an office and they might have an agenda that way but more more of like you say more of politicking around the office of well you know what it's kind of unsettling that that we're going in such a violent direction let's at least make it where batman doesn't kill anybody and make it where batman doesn't use guns because that'll be more friendly well, you know what? I mean, that that actually, and I'm going to get into the political spectrum on this because of the whole police violence stuff, right? Um, I, I, you know, I've all, all often thought like, you know, police have a gun, and that's like pretty much a 200 year old weapon, right? Probably older than that. And so, like, you you would I you would almost think that you could learn something from Batman, like, you know, policing would be so much better if we updated our technology i mean and i'm not a police officer so so i don't know but i mean well, come on come on we can't we can't develop technologies that can take down somebody without killing them now that's, that's I, the table. I i have something to say about that but i'm gonna let dane boy kind of you know Dane, why, why don't you uh, tell us what you think about what Todd just said, and then I'm going to summarily destroy Todd. <laughs> well, That's fine. If, if, if you are looking for non-lethal features, the gun's still going to be your best tool. You can give by rubber bullets. They will take somebody down pretty effectively and leave you with a huge bruise on your chest or leg or whatever. They'll bring you down. 
probably still going to be lethal if you take it to the head, but it's still a better option, I guess, than killing. Okay, so this is this is my thinking on it is 99% of what Batman does in comic books is against the Geneva Convention and violates all constitutional rights that we have as citizens. There's no way on God's green earth that, that a police officer could take a criminal to the top of a building throw him off, grab him with a grappling hook. By the way, I'm throwing out whether that's feasible or not. Grab him with a grappling hook and ring him back up and be like, we can do it again. You want to go on that ride again? I may not catch you this time. There's no way that would go over. Now, as comic book fans, as comic book fans, I know each and every one of us are like, I'd still kind of like to see that on certain criminals but there's no way there's no way they could get away with that uh and i get what you're saying that his technology but um yeah I, I i still don't see i don't see them allowing them to gas uh criminals or any of that stuff you know what i mean just, so, just my two cents. So you don't see cops walking around with bag, bat belts, <laughs> with, no. with uh, you know the with, little with, the with vial bat, <laughs> with bat shark spray and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't see that. I don't see that. I but, I just wanted to throw that out there. I just, just no, I know. To have a little bit of fun with it. Oh um, no, you're cool, man. And I was kidding about destroying you, but that as soon as you said that, I'm like, there's no way the ACLU or the 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 court system or anybody would be like yes we're going the batman route that's a good <laughs> idea but okay so i got you know i i brought up the fact that the um it, it, it kind of sucks that the joker if joaquin phoenix plays this joker so well it kind of sucks that we're, we're we're using him in this film and not using him in future films because i mean i do love the, the Marvel universe and what they've done. And I would love to see DC have the same success. I mean, I'm, I'm not a hater so much. I, I want to see, you know, awesome superhero movies. So it, it does kind of suck that, that he's being used now. Um, I mean, can you imagine like, so Robert Pattinson is going to play the new Batman. Right. And, and so I know there's villains that we want to see that we might not have seen, but can you imagine, like, even if it, this is a trilogy, could you imagine a trilogy for Batman without the Joker? And I, I'll, I'll, I'll give this to Dane first. What, what are your thoughts? What was the question again? I'm sorry. Could you, could you imagine, like, a Batman trilogy and then not having the Joker as one of the main villains in the Batman trilogy? I don't think he's necessarily needed. Um... I know, I know Joker is synonymous with Batman. Like when you hear the word Batman, you think of the Joker as his main force. I think they could do a lot more interesting stuff going with one of his lesser known um, characters in his rogues. Um, I mean, I know Riddler is pretty, po uh, pretty well known, but you could do a lot more interesting stuff with the Riddler than you can necessarily with the Joker. If you, if Joker you were gonna... is just anarchy for the sake of anarchy, where someone like Riddler legitimately has a goal. If you were going to have three villains in a, in a Batman trilogy, it seems like they do a trilogy. Uh, so let's say the Joker's out. So what three villains would you have? And I, I'll throw this at you first, John. I mean, what, what three villains do you think Batman should have in, in, in a trilogy? You know, that's a really, really good question, especially taking out his arch nemesis, the Joker. Um, obviously, we've already seen Bane and we've seen Scarecrow already. Um, so I would not necessarily want to see them do that. And we've even seen, to a certain extent, uh, Superman and Batman at odds. So you don't necessarily want to see that. Um, I would like to see Owlman, frankly. 
But there again, we go back to the, well, Owlman is from an alternate universe. So um, the gentleman that I had the heated discussion with would not be in favor of Owlman because he's basically Batman from a different universe. Um, I, I do enjoy that dynamic of somebody who can match wits with Batman. Um, I think that's one of the things that some things got wrong with Bane as far as Bane is a legitimately smart guy just because he's so physically imposing you you get you get it where he he doesn't have to uh they can rely on that physical brute force in the fight sequences um let me think of some uh i look clayface would be pretty awesome i think with the cgi that they have available it's questionable to me whether DC has any actual working knowledge of how CGI works, considering what they did with Justice League. But that, you know, and Batman or and Superman's mustache. Um, you know, so so like you say, they may not be able to execute Clayface, but that would be a good one. Um I I kind of would like to see. Man, it, you pose a really good question. I'm not sure I've got two other ones in mind other than Clayface. Well, then, while you're thinking about it, let's go to Dane because uh, he, he's been sitting and thinking about it. So, Dane, what are your thoughts, man? Yeah, and, John, yeah. and, John, we'll come back to you. I'm not trying to cut you off. No, you're cool, man. You're cool. If I were to try to build a Batman trilogy, I'd, I, I'd probably try to go at it kind of like a, a build-up to a big bad by the third film. Uh, use someone like Hush for the third film. Like he's been lynch, uh, he's been masterminding a whole thing from movie one, and he utilizes a lot of the lesser known villains throughout the whole thing, like Zaz, you know, Ventriloquist, you know, like like his own personal army. And then in each film, have like uh, like someone be kind of like his general in a way. And in each film, at the end, like maybe Riddler or the Penguin, in you know the first two movies. And finally, Batman catches up and finally crushes Hush. That would be a good route to go. Um, and I know that that, that storyline for Hush is, is among his best stories. You know, in that same way, a guy who could be pulled off that way. And I know we saw him in the Nolan trilogy as Ra's al Ghul. I, I worry that people would think of Hush as a Ra's al Ghul uh, retread, maybe. Yeah, I can see that. And, and so I, I would worry about that. Um, I also worry that, that like the Riddler was a little tainted by the Jim Carrey performance. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I love rough. Jim Carrey as a Riddler. He wasn't that... Okay. People pan all of those early Batman movies. They were it was the nineties, man. That's that's what you were actually hoping to get out of those guys was a performance like that because it was the nineties. You want stuff that 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 fits the time period and you need to understand it. It's like it's like looking at the the old Superman's uh and being ticked that that there's not more like better CGI in it or something like that. It's like, come on, man, that's that's what it was, and just look at it for what it is. Yeah, you know, I mean, I mean, bringing up that movie, we have Mister Freeze, and I think I think it, a darker story with Mister Freeze would probably be a pretty cool story because, I mean, basically he's just trying to save his love. It, it, it would kind of, it, I mean, I know it, it might be an endearing story like Thanos. We kind of kind of fell in love with Thanos as a good guy in this, <laughs> in this last series of movies from Marvel. So we, we might actually sympathize with Mr. Freeze 
and people might not like that. I think, but I think freeze would be a, a cool one. You know what? I mean, I guess one of the tragedies, tragedies of the whole, um, failure of the, the DC universe is that Gal Gadot played Wonder Woman so well. I mean, she was probably one of the best characters in there. I haven't seen Aquaman yet, but everybody that's seen Aquaman raves about it. And that dude that plays Aquaman is actually, I liked him in Game of Thrones. I got to watch Aquaman. I've just been too lazy to do it. I know it's, it's pathetic. It's a good movie. Really? I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it myself. Um, but then again, again, I went into it with very low expectations. You know what? And, and that's true, too. And, and I was reading something online the other day about that characters w that are le that are less well known were actually willing to give them more of a pass and they can be more uh they can be a little more experimental i i honestly think that's one of the reasons why guardians of the galaxy went over the way it did i still i have found maybe two people that are like yep i was into guardians of the galaxy way before the movie but i I have to take their word for it that they're telling me the truth because to be frank with you, whenever they announced guardians of the galaxy, everybody was like, are you kidding? Guardians <laughs> of the galaxy? Why <laughs> guardians of the galaxy? And, and everyone to a person were like, I'm not going to see this movie. I don't care. It's, it's guardians of the galaxy. No one cares about Guardians of the Galaxy. And then we get to the franchise as it sets now. They've had two killer movies. They've been able to be experimental. And I promise you, as much as I love comic books, I still don't have any earthly idea whether they were close to actual comic book continuity or not. I don't know. You know, I don't think it really matters with Guardians of the Galaxy. Marvel did such a great job casting all of their characters. I mean, you know, like, I mean, Iron Man is Robert Downey Jr., I think, it, for the rest of our lives, right? And Chris Evans is, it is but whoever that character that he played. Gosh, Moses, you, you'd probably be pissed, but I forgot his name. But he, 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 played, he played Johnny Storm. Oh, oh okay, Four. yeah, yep. But, I mean... It, it, uh, <laughs> but I mean, I mean, Peter Quill, I, I don't, I, Chris, what's, whatever his name is. I mean, he played Peter Quill. One of the Chris's. Chris something. Yeah. He played Peter Quill. Chris great. Pratt. Chris Pratt. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. That's why I had you on the show because you always uh, correct me on things. <laughs> but, but uh, Drax, I mean, that character, what, Batista played that character amazing. I mean, that he's actually one of my favorite characters in the Marvel Universe. So, you know, that's all I got. No, you, you're, now, you're, as far as go, John uh, saying, does it fit towards actual, like, comic book continuity? Not really. Uh, Star-Lord is uh, more of a dubious character. Like, you don't, you don't take your eyes off of him kind of – He's that kind of guy. Like, you can't fully trust him. He's got an alternative motive, or at least at the beginning of it, he did. Okay. And see, like I say, it. I, I think in that way, lesser-known characters are given much more liberty to kind of do what they want to do. Um, honestly, I think that that's one reason that Moon Knight will likely go over like gangbusters on Disney Plus or Hulu or wherever they just Disney decides to land him, a relatively popular character, but I would he's not okay. People want to say that Moon Knight is Marvel's Batman. I'm not really buying that. No, I, I'm not buying that at all. But people want to say that Moon Knight concepts were borrowed off of Batman, but as far as a character, no. Right. Well, I mean, that's that's like saying, that, and, and most people know that, that Cletus Cassidy Carnage 
was loosely based off of the Joker. We're bringing this back full circle here. It was loosely based off of the Joker. But the truth of the matter is after everything is said and done, they're two different characters that just share the same motivation of causing as much carnage and chaos as they possibly can. And they don't really have the master plan in mind to rule the world. They just want to, they just want to spread misery and chaos. Now is Moon Knight a set series? I mean, I, I heard rumors that he was supposed to be on, on Black Panther, but now I'm, I'm guessing that Black Panther is going to have Namor. So is Moon, Moon Knight going to be a Disney Plus series? Last I heard, it was a Disney Plus series or Hulu. Um, you know, that, that can change day to day anymore. We found, we found that out with them bringing Spider-Man back into the MCU. Everybody died. thought that deal was dead in the water. And then they make a surprise Friday announcement. Hey, guess what? Spider-Man's back. woo -hoo. You know, well, Spider Man, Spider, their hope with Spider Man is that he can save Captain Marvel because Brie Larson is kind of uh, a little bit wooden, and they want Spider Man to add a little bit of humor, is what I've heard. Now, you know, I, I will say, like in, in Endgame, I think Brie Larson, I, I haven't seen Captain Marvel yet, so it, not, not because I have anything against Brie Larson, but because I, I really don't know too much about Captain Marvel. Um, but I, I mean, I thought Brie Larson did a pretty good job in Endgame. I, I thought one of the clutch plays in Endgame was when Thanos pulls off the Power Stone or whatever and smashes her. And I mean, I know she's getting smashed, but that was a, actually a pretty cool scene. So, I, I mean, I think the whole purpose of Spider-Man is maybe they're hoping to resurrect Brie Larson. I mean, is that possible? I, I don't know that it's I don't know that it's possible, but you, I have seen Captain Marvel. We, my son begged me to go see it in the theaters because he was worried that if he didn't see it, that we wouldn't fully get what was going on in Endgame. Because you got, you, you know, if you remember, they really touted that she's going to play a pivotal role. They never said a big role or an expansive role or a major role. They called it, they, they used terms like pivotal. And let's be honest, she did, but she was basically non-existent for 90% of that movie. Um, so uh, of Endgame, um, the Captain Marvel movie was an origin story that to me was basically fairly forgettable. It just was. I, I I mean, she she did okay, but I never I did not come out of that movie being like, I can't believe that that this is this is the most like Guardians of the Galaxy. I I'm gonna go back to them because it rings true to me. I knew very little about either or. I come out of Guardians of the Galaxy wanting to know more about guardians of the galaxy i come out of captain marvel being like a eh, big deal who cares and that's that's the way it felt coming out now the other thing too is i don't want to get into the the uh, uh conspiracy theories about marvel buying up tickets in in uh in foreign markets to make it into a billion dollar property but I know that when me and my son went to see it, there were three other people besides us. So a total of five people. It was not opening weekend, but it was the weekend directly after. So it had not been out long enough for everyone to have gone and seen it. And it was on a Saturday in prime time. So there was, there was no reason why that, why there should have been five people in that, in that, uh, in that theater if it was a billion dollar property you would think that um you would think that there would have at least been 30 or 40 people in there and i'm not in some podunk town i'm not in a major major metro area but i'm in a metro area of about a half a million people 
You know what I mean? And the parking lot was full and the other movie theaters were full. Um, but yeah, I, I, I could see it being Peter Parker, Spider-Man, please save this next phase. Give us some type of entertainment value. Well, Dana, Kevin, look, go, oh, ahead. go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, I was, was going to say, Dane, it looked like you agreed with some of my points there. Oh, uh, Do you want to expand on any of them? With, with you know, on the Captain Marvel thing, it to me, Brie Larson. I mean, I have no problems with Brie politically or anything. So, just people who view this know that mine has no bearing from the political aspect of her. Um, her media circle that was going on then but uh she's like Kristen Stewart everything in everything in that performance was just flat you never see her smile you never really see her grimace I mean it's just flat face just like an in-game <clears throat> and the same thing rings true I could you know I could care less if I seen the movie I mean there, there there's no real investment from it, like when you went and saw Guardians of the Galaxy, you came out of it, you're like, wow, that was a great movie. You saw the first Iron Man, you're like, wow, that was a great movie. This one is, if they don't make a sequel, I'm not going to be mad about it, I guess. You guys, you guys might know more about Carol Danvers than I do. I mean, I don't know too much about her. I mean, you know, I, my, my, and first of all, I mean, on the political thing, I mean, the only problem that I had with Brie Larson was that she used white guys. And I thought it would have been braver if she, I mean, if she would have pointed out like certain critics or something or just said dudes, I think that would have been cooler. Like, cause then I could support you, you know, like I know a lot of these critics are probably fucking douchebags, you know? And, and so it kind of sucked being thrown in. Like I'm a 40 year old white guy. And it kind of sucks being thrown into that whole mosh pit of 40 year old white guys. But you know, the one thing that she doesn't understand about 40 year old white guys is we're 40 year old white guys and we really don't give a shit. <laughs> you, you know, like most of us, 99% of us don't really give a shit. Like, I, you know, I don't care, whatever, you know, I mean, and so like I was saying, you know, I could, I could be your friend or I could be your enemy, you know, point out the fucking idiots that are talking about this shit and I'll be your friend. I, I would rather be your friend. I'm a fan of these movies. So, you know, I, I want, I want good stuff. I want you to do a good job. Um, but it, back to the whole Carol Danvers thing. Um, I haven't read much about Carol Danvers. I mean, is she a straight face character? I mean, cause no, I, she's, she's very, very passionate. Like, uh, right. He's prone to rate fits of rage kind of thing. Like she'll, she'll, destroy you know kind of thing right uh, there's some right. stories where when rogue took her powers and she went on to become binary and then you know in the x-men you know, x-men side of the books and she was a part of the shiar empire and then she came back and became ms marvel again joined the avengers and changed her name to warbird briefly and right a badass character when they promoted her to captain marvel that's kind of when I started losing interest is because it's like you're doing a disservice to the original Captain Marvel. And the other part to the movie that pissed me off is they did a disservice to the source material too, like the original Captain Marvel or Marvel was shown to be a woman. And no, 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 no problem with a woman character, but it's like, come on, at least throw a tribute to, you know, the original character. Well, and, and I'll say this, that, that my whole gripe with a lot of, with a lot of characters like that, that will take up the mantle of an older character, I would prefer that they have their own identity. So like Ms. Marvel, I get is a derivative of Captain Marvel originally. I get that. I'm not naive. I get it. But I would much rather have somebody be an original like, like um, let's take Moon Girl or Squirrel Girl for examples. Do Am I a fan personally of either of those characters? No. But I respect them. I respect the writers and the creators for going out and creating something original 
as opposed to being a derivative or saying, hey, you know what, we're going to uh, kill off Tony Stark and we're going to give his Iron Man uh, suit to someone else. And that's the new Iron Man. See, see for, for a character like him, that works. His armor it, it, it is a hand-me-down. It, the character can be original in the fact that how how that person is inside the armor could be completely different than how Tony Stark was. Well, and, and I get that. I get that. And, and I've brought that up before in the past as well, is that um, is, is that in the original Secret Wars, one of the big things was was Rhodey was in the, was in the Iron Man armor, and part of his that, that Iron Man storyline in in Secret Wars was that uh, he was worried everybody was going to find out he wasn't Tony Stark, and and that's what made him interesting. But eventually, instead of being Iron Man, he became War Machine. He came out from under that that. And became his own thing, right? And, and and that I like. That I don't mind. I would rather it be something in that vein than Ms. Marvel being promoted to Captain Marvel. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or like like you say, I think they did a disservice to Marvel. Um, I don't think that was good of them to do because I think that there was. If they had planned this out better, they, and I think, Dane, I think you and I have had this discussion before, uh, privately, they could have had a a, a trilogy of Captain Marvel if they had done it correctly. And there would have been a lot of investment in Carol Danvers becoming Captain Marvel if they had done it correctly. You know, you know what I do? Does that ring a bell to you? Because I swear it was me and you. It may not. No, no. I, I remember D- Dane actually educated us on Captain Marvel, I think, like on the third podcast that we did. I was there, too. I just want to make sure you know. I mean, Oh, yeah. I, I, remember, the, I remember the pod. It was a great conversation. It was. Uh, we, we have a new dog in the house. Oh, no. <laughs> It's about time to wrap this one up, isn't it? This is Snedek. <laughs> Got you waiting, huh? So, so we're talking about Carol Danvers in the, the Captain Marvel movie, uh, Milk Dog. Have you uh, seen that one yet? No, I didn't get invited. I got uninvited to that film. Yeah, okay. <laughs> How were you uninvited? <laughs> I, uh, we were just saying, Todd. It was, a, it, it was a blanket uh, uninvite. I wasn't the only one. There was a lot of us. All yeah. four of us. She saved me a lot of money. It's expensive. Go to so, the theater. Days. Yeah, yes, it definitely is. John was John was saying that, uh, and, and I've heard this too, that there's a possibility that Disney was buying tickets so that they could, uh, you know, make it look a little bit more popular than what it actually was. I believe I, it. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I mean, for other movies, it's been like even Hollywood in general. There's studios that have done this, and it, this is not a new thing. So, to say that uh, they never did this ever, it's kind of well, like they they disputed it, of course, because okay, it's like it's like professional wrestling when they inflate attendance numbers at WrestleMania or something like that. People in the real world gather that there's probably not that many people in the stands, but for for press and for uh, you know just for your random getting extra publicity, you've got to say those things. You got to do those things. Um, but yeah, I'm aware of that as well. That it, it seems as though it seems to be a regular occurrence with with other movies as well. It's not a new trend in the movie industry. Yeah, it's been going on for years and years. It's 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 nothing new. I mean, it's it's common practice at this point. Um, but all I can say is, uh, you know, on the Captain Marvel tip, I asked I asked my daughter, and she, 
uh, I can use her words to sum it up for you guys best. I asked my daughter, Mimi, do you want to go see the Captain Marvel movie? She went, hmm, nah. I go, really? How come? She goes, well, is it going to have Captain America in it? And I said, nah, I don't think so. And she goes, nah. So right there, that, that tells you all you need to know. So there's your, there's your feminist, whatever. Well, you know, uh, that little, little girl didn't want to see the movie because it didn't have Captain America in it. There you go. <laughs> that, that brings up a pretty good point. I mean, because now we're going on to what Marvel phase four or phase five or whatever. I mean, can, I mean, Robert Downey Jr. Was amazing. Chris Evans was amazing. I mean, where, where do you guys see it going? Is it going to continue the, with the, the excitement and popularity? Do you, see, do you guys see it kind of like dying down? You know, John, I'll pass it to you first and then you can pass it around. I, I do worry that, I mean, come on, let, let's be real here. They've been a juggernaut for years now, more than a decade. I do worry that, that some of the popularity is going to die down just naturally. Um, we talked about this before. Dane, Dane and Todd have both brought up that the casting in Marvel movies has been amazing. Like, it, they have very rare misses in actual Marvel movies. Um, to, to the point, like you say, Robert Downey Jr., I think the kid who's playing uh, Spider-Man right now is is just unreal. I, I think he's the most complete Spider-Man and Peter Parker both. The other two guys, the other two guys were good at either at either being Peter Parker or being Spider-Man, but not both. Um, so I think that that's I think that that's excellent still, but there is going to be a natural kind of come down from that height because I just, it's not sustainable. There's historically what they've already done is, is historically unmatched. Nobody has ever put together. What is it? 21 or 22 movies the way that they have. Could they, I guess they could, but, I, I still want to err on the side of being a little conservative here and say that I don't think that it's possible for them to uh just to, to maintain that that level of popularity. Dane, what do you think? Yeah, I I I, I can see it kind of sputtering down a little bit. I, I think it's still gonna do well. I just don't think we're gonna see the box office numbers we saw in the first, you know first three phases or four phases or whatever it was. Uh, it, I mean, it, I, I generally, I, I, I believe it's going to hinge more on whether they come up with a great, you know, if they're going to run it kind of like the Thanos thing, they need to come up with a great villain for them to lead up to again. And who would that great villain be? I, I think that's a, there's, that's there's like the so, toughest question there's there's so many good ones that they could go with i mean even if you know I, i'd like to see a galactus thing come or even then lead up to a secret wars it it, it, it could explain in the x-men and fantastic four easy you know to be honor being the next big bad Tiffany, Tiffany, what do you think about the the next uh, Marvel villain? <laughs> Who do you think uh, the next she, Marvel villain should be? <laughs> Tif Tiffany just uh, gave me a good night kiss, so she's uh, she's she's hitting the uh, sack. So so, all right. So Brian, I mean, first of all, Brian, I mean, I I know you weren't the biggest fan of the the Infinity the whole infinity Thanos and all that stuff. I mean, who, who's a villain that could pop up that would get you excited? Um, uh, like Dane said, I, I'm down with some Galactus and some fantastic four, you know, as long as they stick true to the comics, which they won't do, uh, they refuse to. Um, 
So, you know, that's something that I would get excited to see, but I'm not going to get excited for anything because they're not going to do that. If anything is a good idea or anybody has a good idea for a plot, like that guy, our comics explained, he's constantly coming up with like good ideas for Marvel and MCU to, to do. And, and it's like, I listen to it and I'm like, that's a great idea. That's a, the exact opposite of what they'll do. They'll do the exact opposite. But like I said, man, I'm a hard sell anyways. You know, I, I'm pretty, uh, I'm, I'm kind of a curmudgeon when it comes to just Hollywood and movies in general anymore. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, I'm getting to the point where it's, you know, it's the, the new generation. And if it's not my generation style, then I don't like it no more anyways. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm the type, like, I'm the type that's like, I could just watch Blade. I'll just watch Blade again. You're going, good... you're going the way of get off my grass. <laughs> get out of my yard, kids. Yeah, I don't What's like the, the new Spider-Man. I don't like it. My kids look, love it. Look, okay, uh, I, I, I do think that they're a bit tech heavy with this Spider-Man. And I would prefer that he be a little more DIY Spidey from whenever I was a kid where he's out he's out in the shed or he's in his room making all this stuff he's struggling to get by he has to worry about rent he has to worry about Aunt May he has to he has all of these real world worries and yeah I don't think that that Spider-Man fits in the MCU but I like I say I gotta say this kid playing this Spider-Man, he's nerdy enough as Peter Parker to be Peter Parker. So he's convincing with his teenage angst, but when he's Spider-Man, they've written the lines correctly where he's quippy, he, he, he's a little more playful than an adult would be as Spider-Man. And for that, that's why I like this Spider-Man of all three of them. He's the best. I, I mean, I, go ahead. I, I love Tom Holland, but you, you just had me thinking. All right, so Tom Holland, so the, the one dude that had Doctor Strange, um, of the Black Order that had Doctor Strange kind of trapped with all of those, like, needles – and Tom Holland's plan was to do the aliens thing, to blow him out of the – I mean, is Tom Holland old enough to have known about the aliens thing? I mean, I know we live in the generation of, you know, technology, but really? I don't really – go ahead. Go ahead, Brian. I was just going to say, like, uh, I don't know about y'all, but – I don't really have a problem with the actors per se, like their casting or anything. I just get a problem with um, them just going out of their way to bend and twist the comic book canon to fit in whatever it is that they're trying to fit in. And it's like, you don't know better than the guys who created it. You, you, the reason that we love it is because it came from these books. Now I get it. Our opinion as uh, uh, longtime followers of, of comic book lore, the original lore, the, you know, normal people, I, I hate to say normies, but because I guess, like at one point, comic books were the norm, you know what I mean? Now that, you know, it's, now it's becoming the norm again, so, so to speak, like it's cool to be in the comics, but like I understand when they're trying to go for a mass appeal thing, but some of the stuff they do is not even mass appeal. So it's they're just trying to prove whatever their, their dumb point is. And that's when I start to tune out. And that's when I'm just like, like uh, me and Todd were talking earlier today when we were talking about, I, I brought up Dante's peak, right? That, that, that style of making movies where they just made a movie, right? That movie is pretty much a B movie. It had some big name actors in it, you know, Pierce Brosnan, uh, uh, um, uh, Sarah Connor. What, I, what's, I don't know the actress's name, but it's Sarah Connor. <laughs> Sarah Connor. And, uh, you know, that movie is a lot of fun, and that movie is awful. Another awful movie is Twister. The movie's awful. But it's just a lot of fun. And anytime it's on, I can't bring myself to turn it off. I have to keep watching. And 
you got movies like that. Even Spider Man Three, which is everyone's pretty much least favorite of the Spider Man okay, trilogy, you, the original Spider Man trilogy. You, you're treading on thin ice here. I'm just warning you. Do I that, need to mute them? <laughs> yeah, you, you might yeah. have to. <laughs> That's go ahead. everyone's I'm sorry. favorite, but at least they got the origin of Venom correct. You know what I mean? This this new Venom movie that came out, oh. they couldn't, they didn't even have the wherewithal to introduce it and wait. They oh, they still own Spider Man. Just wait and put Venom with Spider Man. Just give them the proper origin like he's supposed to. So as much as I couldn't stand. Uh, uh, the jackass from that 70s show getting the role of Eddie Brock. Other than that, the movie is kind of solid as far as the origin of bringing Venom in. I mean, it, it does follow, you know, the, for all its faults, there is a, a lot of good in that. I mean, Sandman was amazing in Spider-Man 3. Um, okay. So, so this is where you and I are going to definitely disagree. Spider-Man 3 was a train wreck. Absolutely. It was the worst. First, are you giving me a, a virtual high five there? Or are you telling me to hold up? Like, if they're actually going to stick to the origin story, I don't remember Secret Wars happening where yeah. Venom was created. No, that's where I was. But, but I will say this. I will say this. They did kind of go in a way that the 90s Spider-Man cartoon went to get Venom in. That, that he... Okay. Any of you guys watched the, the 90s Spider-Man? Okay, so if you remember correctly, John Jameson came back with the, with the symbiote from a Mars mission, and it came out, and Peter Parker rescued him, which is semi-comic book accurate, not 100%, but semi-comic book accurate, and he climbs out of the Hudson with this black goop on his suit after he saved John Jameson from the, the crashing uh, uh, Mars uh, uh, spacecraft, whatever, okay? He then has a bunch of nightmares during the night and the Venom symbiote crawls out of the closet, takes him over, and he wakes up hanging up upside down in New York from a skyscraper just just being black suit Spider-Man okay so in that way from the 90s cartoon a little bit I can give them a little bit but even then like Dane says it wasn't Secret Wars number eight so it's definitely not comic book continuity at all but I also have a problem with Venom being a sidekick villain Venom yeah. is nobody's sidekick villain. Venom was Spider-Man's villain from the late 80s through the early 90s until um, until Cletus Cassidy shows up. And, and so, I, and you're right, Sandman, they did a good job. They did a good job casting him even. The CGI was pretty good for him too, but they went with this doppelganger of Venom being Venom being Spider-Man's doppelganger, so they're more equal in size. That was never Eddie Brock in the comics. Eddie Brock in the comics was this gorilla of a dude who yeah, was a he former was bodybuilder. Gym. Yeah, he was a gym rat. Yeah. Right, right. Well, actually yeah, the, casting, the casting was off. What I'm saying is they tried to give us Spider-Man in the black suit first. And then the the pretty much the ringing of the bell gets the suit off of him. It falls down onto Eddie Brock underneath him. So in, in that sense, they like, they tried. We all know at that time, we were, you were never getting a Secret Wars origin story. It wasn't going to happen. You know, so Sony wasn't, that, that was never going to happen. I mean, look at Marvel, how they did Civil War. I, I, I hate that movie. It's, to me, it's like Avengers versus West Coast Avengers. That's all it is. It's not even Civil War. So, well, I I get that. I'm I'm just saying that I'm, and I'll say that I didn't really have a problem with with the, the way that the suit came to Peter Parker. It was just that it was such a train wreck of a movie, and they tried to shoehorn Venom into it. They absolutely could have could have went a different direction 
and let Sandman be the bad guy and make a fourth movie with Venom in it. Well, actually, let me, let me just cut in. I, I watched the video and I, the director had actually not wanted Venom in this movie. He wanted Venom into a fourth movie. I, I, and so Venom wasn't really even supposed to be in this movie. It, it was I, Sony, I guess, at the time said, we need to get Venom into this movie. And that was the mistake that they made. In that case, the director was actually right, unlike like Brian Johnson, who I, I won't bring up, but <laughs> our beloved Star Wars, The Last Jedi. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, I think Tobey Maguire was originally signed on for like six films, so that would make sense that they were going to make they were going to make Venom was going to get his own movie. He would be the sole, the sole uh, bad guy. There wouldn't have, there would have been no bad guy sidekick. Now the the other problem, and I know that everybody points to this as being a problem with that movie, is the five. It wasn't even five. It was a three-minute montage of Dark Peter dancing his sorry rear end around the streets being a complete douche. If they had used that same three minutes to give Eddie Brock any kind of real actual backstory in melding with the symbiote, that could have absolutely 100% changed that movie, in my opinion. It, 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 you you take out the douchebaggery. We all know that Peter Parker was going dark with the symbiote, but if you get into to more of where Venom actually comes from and why we are Venom, you have they treated Venom like he was a singular character. They never really showed anything about the Venom speaking to Eddie, and that just. That grinds my gears, man. That that just I will it, say that it's uh, unforgivable. I will say that um I, I can agree with that, with that with that scene with the dancing and stuff. And also Tiffany would also agree with you because she absolutely hates that movie and it's all because of that scene. She can't stand it. It's that cringeworthy to her. She just <laughs> she can't stand that movie. I, I, I'll tell you right now, the only reason that I own that movie and that it is actually still in my house is it was a birthday gift from my in-laws. And they meant really good by getting it to me. But I despise that movie because that was forever and eternity. That's going to be the first on-screen appearance of my personal favorite character in, in the Marvel Universe. And it forever will be that black eye on that character. Now I know Dane doesn't really have a dog in this fight, but but Dane, you you got to have some kind of opinion on Spider Man Three, like everybody has. And it might be it might be a crappy one, but I still want to hear it. Oh, God awful! I mean, it. It, they try to jam way too much into it. It, 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 it. it harkens back to Batman and Robin. Way too much being jammed into a short period of time. Venom should have been slated to be a solo villain, villain by himself, either in that film or in the next one. It didn't make any sense to even have Sandman a part of it. Well, I, I, I agree that, that, and even then, Sandman... To me, Sandman is more of a brute character, or a he would should be the one that would be a sidekick villain. But he should be a sidekick villain for like the Vulture. You know what I'm saying? Somebody who's got the mastermind and the tech, but is a little frail and needs needs to have some muscle behind him to be a credible threat. That and again, I, I don't mind the way that they did Spider Man Homecoming. I liked that version of the Vulture, that was good by me. But again, like I've said before, too, I look at all of these films as either Elseworld or What If uh, type reading, and those, those are books that I absolutely love. I don't mind that they're not in continuity. And I also look at it as they don't, comic books can't 
be a direct one-to-one -one comparison on TV or in movies because they're different mediums. You can't, a 32 page book does not translate to a 30 minute TV show. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and the other part that I hated about the movie was the awkward side story for, I, I don't know if you want to call it Osborne Hobgoblin or whatever he was in that movie, but that, that didn't really help push the story along either. They, they should have at least filled it in with more venom type stuff. If, if you follow, he didn't me. seem very hobgoblin. He did he? No, <laughs> I, I, I'm not even entirely sure what he was, what he was supposed to be. I, you know. Well, they did. In in any case, the only character that came out of that where I felt like they did him any justice was Sandman. He was the only one. Yeah, I, I, I actually agree that Sandman was played well, but I, I felt he had a, a full story as well. Right, right. Well, and, and like you say, and Bryce Dallas Howard, I must add, Bryce Dallas Howard did a fantastic job as she does in everything that she's in. <laughs> I don't even know who that is. Who, who, what, who'd she play? Gwen Stacy. I'll have to look that up. <laughs> Go watch it again, but watch it in slow motion. <laughs> wasn't Sa wasn't Sandman like? Wasn't he? Did, did you ever see that like '80s show where they were like in an airport and, and it was wings. like Low? Yeah, Wings, and it, it, his name was Lowell or whatever or something. I mean, that, that's what I always think of when I think of uh, uh, Sandman. I, I agree, though. Sandman was pretty awesome in that movie. I, I I'd love to see Sandman again. I don't know if we ever will, but in in theory, they could do. Look, I I keep hoping that at some point they'll do like a Sinister Six or something like that. But even even a Sinister Six movie, I worry that it would be too convoluted because we're just talking about having Spider Man, Hobgoblin, Light. Uh, Sandman and Venom all in the same movie. That's only three villains. If you tried to cram six in, unless if each one of them had already had a prior full full movie, no, I, they wouldn't have enough screen time. Sony's original plan with with the Amazing Spider-Man Two was it was supposed to lead up to. The, like the Spider Man, Amazing Spider Man 3 was supposed to have another character from the Sinister Stick, another character or two from the Sinister Six. And then they were going to do a Sinister Six movie. That was the original plan before they yanked Andrew Garfield and pulled a plug on that whole that whole universe. Did, did, didn't you like Rhino, man, at the end of that movie? It was such a tease and then it went nowhere, man. I thought right? Pig Vomit, Pig Vomit as Rhino, I thought was so amazing. He looked so good as the Rhino. And I never would have thought to pick him and cast him. I would have never thought, here, let's put Pig Vomit as a uh, rhino. I don't even know what the guy's real name is. I just call him Pig Vomit from, uh, from the Howard Stern movie. WNBC. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, that's too funny, man. Yeah, I... Uh, wait so long. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I... I'm trying to think here of any other because we, you know, we've talked about that that Spider-Man movie now. I, Brian, I I get that you're going like full curmudgeon old man on us, which is totally cool. Me and Todd don't do that nearly enough. That he he only does that for Star Wars. I only do that for What If books. Yeah, I'm a grumpy Star Wars guy. I mean, I I, I must say, I must say though, in Homecoming. I really like that movie. Um, even though I don't like like hot Aunt May, I think that's weird. Uh, like that whole Tony Starks and Aunt May thing is weird. Um, but I must say, Michael Keaton as the Vulture was amazing. And I couldn't wait to buy that movie and watch it again just for all those Michael Keaton Vulture scenes. But to me, uh, he nailed it. Whether it was true to the comics or not true to the comics you got a guy like michael keaton man i'm a michael keaton fan so 
you know, that guy, that, those scenes when he's talking to Peter Parker in the back seat, it was like, it put chills up your spine. You know what I mean? It's just, yeah. nobody does it like him. He did a good job. Well, and full disclosure here, last night I watched, I, I did not go see Far From Home in the theaters. Okay, I did not do that. But I will say that I think Jake Gyllenhaal pulled off Mysterio excellently as well. I like him. Yeah. I, I, I like think him. that I I think that they did Mysterio justice too because they went from you know they went from the old hokey stuff that he was doing originally in in the early Spider-Man but it was all illusion based they just brought it into a real world feeling with with drones and with projected hologram technology type stuff that that it, it looked like something that and i get to that they're all trying to make this a well this could really happen in our world kind of feel to it too um i think which i they, really hate but i liked it in that movie i right. i usually hate that but i liked it in that movie i thought it was cool i thought stereo was cool in that well you know i mean and I guess this brings us to a kind of a what if moment. I, I, Jake Gyllenhaal is a really awesome actor. I mean, I don't know if you've seen the one where he's a photographer. He's like a dark, murderous photographer. But I mean, he was great. I mean, so I mean, he might have been an awesome Moon Knight. And so they might have actually wasted a incredibly good actor on a one film performance and i mean when i mean when you think about the fact that we're losing robert downey jr we're losing chris evans ah man i mean lo losing jake gyllenhaal that 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 hurts and i mean we talked earlier about like joaquin phoenix i mean you know we've got and, and brian you weren't here but i mean like can you imagine a batman trilogy without the joker and then i mean joaquin phoenix is such an amazing actor it, it does kind of suck that he's being used in this Joker movie and that we might not be able to see him as the Joker in a Batman movie, so to speak. I mean, you know, it, I, I guess I, I'm, that's, that's the one suck thing about it. I haven't seen that Spider-Man movie yet. I got to rent it because now you guys got me all excited, but it, the, 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 D, the DCU is a mess regardless so it doesn't like to me whatever they do is whatever you know i mean they had some good ones i i liked i liked aquaman uh i don't care what bishop says i liked hey wh why you like that movie with whack cuz uh i liked it uh i don't care what he says uh so and i hear shazam i hear good things about shazam so when it's on sale at target i'll pick it up not it's not a plug or anything for target but you know when it's on sale i'll, I'll pick up shazam and check that out um, but I mean, Batman versus Superman had some cool scenes in it. Uh, but it was a train wreck of a movie. Um, those, the, you know, Superman's one of my favorite characters of all time. Um, and I, I'll say that Justice League had some cool scenes in it and it, but they just, they just dropped the ball. They just, uh, they, they, they try to connect things without connecting it. You know, and then they, they tell their TV people who are doing a better job of telling superhero stories that they're not allowed to do this and they're not allowed to do that. And they don't connect those TV shows to their to their movie universe at all. They want everything separated. They really should have just built off an of arrow or they, better yet, they could have started earlier and built off a of Smallville. They could have just transferred that just like it's the same formula that Star Trek had, had used for years and years and years. They're not currently using that anymore, but they used to have that. They had the original TV show. It was a hit. Then they got a movie, right? Uh, Star Trek Next Generation comes out. It was a hit. And then they get movies. And you know, there's a formula there. So you're bringing your TV cast and then when, and when it's a hit, you've done all you can do with the TV show, you bring them up into the films and you introduce them into the films. They could have did something like that. They could have did a lot of things different, but they, did, they didn't. They never did.
Um, they could have connected Batman and Superman with uh, the Christian Bale movies. Uh, they chose to not to, to leave that disconnected. Um, so they, they've always, I feel like WB Warner brothers has always made poor decisions when it comes to their connected universe, because it's all disconnected. The DCU should be disconnected universe. That's what it stands for. That that's oh. actually, that that's actually about right. And we were, we were saying that earlier that, that it, fe- it felt like they were trying to, it felt like they were trying to cram and beat it, not beat, but compete directly with Marvel by having a shared cinematic universe and only doing it in three or four movies, as opposed to the 20 that it took Marvel to get there, you know? Um, yeah. The, D, DC has had many missteps. I don't know that Joker is going to be one of them. I really think that, now, I'm not going to see it in the movie theater, and I don't think anybody else is either still. I don't think anybody in, in, in our chat tonight has convinced the other to say, yeah, I think I need to go see that in the theaters. But, I mean, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rent it or wait till it's on Netflix or something like that. I will have to take my wife to go see it. She's a big Joker fan. Um, She's she's very excited to to see it. I think she would rather get to see it in the theater. The whole problem is, um, you know, uh, life. A lot of people here. I'm not I'm not bringing uh, the babies into the theater and holding the crying baby. I hate when other people do it, so I won't do it. But if we get a chance to, uh, if I get a chance to to take her to see it, or if she wants to go with her friend to see it. Because I, I, if I see it or I don't see it, I don't care. I got Goodfellas and King of Comedy on Blu-ray. I can watch those anytime I want. You just watch Goodfellas and then you watch King of Comedy. Boom, you got the Joker movie. Oh, stop it. <laughs> but they don't have Joaquin Phoenix, man. Come on. Yeah, she's a big Joaquin fan too. So... I mean, there's a lot that there for, but uh, that, that'd be speaking. Uh, my wife is a big movie fan. Uh, she she used to be a manager at a blockbuster video for years and years and years. So uh, she's a big movie person. Uh, more so, she's she's remained more of a, a movie fan than I have. I I have become a bit of a curmudgeon where I poo poo everything that comes out. It's like if nobody shoots, I don't want to watch it. Or I'm a, I'm a big fan. I become more of a big fan of like. Uh, science fiction based stuff that could be real like the martian stuff like that i get excited for those kind of movies uh what was the one with uh with your doppelganger todd uh all right all right all right the one where he goes into outer space oh uh mcconaughey yeah mcconaughey goes to space and there's the bookshelf. If yeah, you got into a black hole you'd be a lot cooler if you did <laughs> <laughs> I wish my my wife actually loves Matthew McConaughey, so you know I wish I was Matthew McConaughey. I'd be a happier man these days. But <laughs> you need to get yourself a stinking Lincoln. I know, I know. Yeah. I can... You'd be a lot cooler if you did. <laughs> <laughs> you do the voice a lot better than I do. So so we're we're pretty much coming up on uh, on the time, and um, to wrap this one up. We, we did talk a little bit about Spider-Man, and I think we probably all have opinions on who we would love to see as a Spider-Man villain. So why don't we end this with give your final thoughts, and then what Spider-Man villain would you love to see in the next movie? Dane, why don't you go first, and then uh, pass it on to whoever you think you want to hear from next. Who I want to see in the next Batman movie? Spider Man. Or Spider Man, sorry. Duh. Uh, who I want to see? I want to see Doc Ock. I love Doc Ock. I think, I think, I, I really think they can do a lot with that character. Yeah, they could probably do like two or three movies with Doc Ock. What do you think, JR? Well, I look, man. I'm gonna go tried and true here, just just because 
I know they went anti-hero with this Venom movie. I know that Brian's not a huge fan of the Venom movie. I thought it was fun. I don't think it hit the right tones that they intended for it to hit uh, with the movie, but it was still, it, it was funny in not the right way, which is okay by me. I would like to see Venom be the Spider-Man villain that he's supposed to be and then have that character arc go out over another movie where he does make the migration into being an anti-hero. That I would be okay with. Um, and honestly, that's what I hoped for with Spider-Man 3 was that type of venom to finally show up. But I, they, I don't think, I think they, they can keep the casting the same way, but I would love to see venom be a big bad guy and really torment peter parker and mj now you know there again you gotta remember too in the comic books peter parker and mj were married they had their own apartment that kind of thing so that wouldn't be able to happen in the next movie but maybe the following movie they might be able to do something like that brian Okay, uh, I'm going to go full-on fantasy. It's never going to happen, but this is what I hope would happen for uh, the third installment of the Spider-Man movie. I would like to see the Jackal as the uh, the bad guy of the movie and bring in, go ahead and bring in the Punisher as a bad guy. And you can use Burnthal or not use Burnthal and recast it. You can do whatever you want with it as long as the Punisher comes in introduced as a bad guy. And I'd like to see that Punisher remain a bad guy for most of the movie because most people know that Punisher isn't all bad, right? I still consider him more of a villain than, a, than even an anti-hero, even though I love, I love the Punisher. But it would be great for the whole movie. He's really a bad guy. And then at the very end, the very end, you get that that scene where he snaps out of it and realizes like, you know, Peter Parker is a kid all this time. He's going after some kid and he snaps out of it a little bit. And that's his defining moment where, okay, I'm the punisher, but I got this limit here. Let me step back for a second. And then from there on out, you can have your punisher movies. You spin it off properly. It's his first appearance in the MCU and it comes directly from Spider-Man. That would be great. None of this is ever going to happen. Uh, but that's my that's my dream for the for the next movie. So that's all it'll ever be. It would be cool. Okay, and if I can unmute myself, I guess I'll give my final thoughts on this one as as well. I, um, Craven the Hunter. I would like to see Craven the Hunter as a villain. I think that would be cool. Um, since we talked about Spider Man three and all of the other. The probably a, the obnoxious amount of villains that they tried to throw into that movie. I, I won't I won't rail off all the other ones. I mean, you know, Hobgoblin would be cool. Spider Man's got so many cool villains. I mean, Man Wolf would be cool. Like if you get Craven the Hunter hunting Man Wolf and then stuff like that. Um, and, and I did like I liked the Venom movie. My wife even liked the Venom movie. We we actually sat down and watched that and enjoyed it. It's unfortunate that we. He he got he kind of gets wasted because I, I really thought that uh, Tom Hardy did a pretty good job I, I liked him as an actor I he's got that voice like it, it, it's just unique um but yeah I think uh, Craven would probably be my choice hey, do you guys got anything else or you want to wrap this one up uh, Craven's a good one Absolutely. I know it is man. I I actually like all I like all three of your guys' ideas for for those movies, and as a Spider-Man fan and Venom fan, I would be satisfied with any of them, frankly. Even the lizard. <laughs> Hydra Band would be nice because I got the first appearance, so that'd be nice. The lizard, Deadshot, uh, <laughs> on and on and on. <laughs> All right, well, well, we're going to wrap this one up. Thanks, guys, for joining us. I'm going to hit the old stop button. This was fun, right and be, hopefully we can do this again. Be good or be good at it. All right. Snake All right. out.
All right, all right. 